Today, I'm going to rank every Star Wars character on this tier list right here. And as you can see, we have a lot of characters. <laughs> it's going to take a while. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And at first, oh, they give us a softball. We have Ray Palpatine right here. And I think there's one obvious answer that everyone and their mother knows. And Ray Palpatine is going right to F. That is not a question. That's not hard at all. By far, one of, if not the worst characters in Star Wars. And without further ado, let's go on, oh, to the other side of the spectrum, Master Yoda. Yeah, what am I talking about? Yoda's easy S. That was never even a question. I'm just yapping about nothing right now. Next up is Savage Opress. Savage Opress is really tough because Savage had real potential as a character. If you remember, he went through his trials with his brother or his like adopted brother. And at the end of it, he hit the nastiest bulk in like eight seconds and became went from this shriveled up skinny kid who vapes to Sam Sulik over there on trend in like eight seconds. And that's kind of when he lost all character development. The second that Savage found Darth Maul, He's just Darth Maul 2.0. He's just a nasty Darth Maul who has double blade lightsaber too. Like he doesn't have any more growth from there on than on that. There on out. <laughs> Words are tough, guys. So because of that, I gotta put Savage at like C. Because he's awesome, he's sick, and he's really fun to watch in a duel, but he doesn't really have that much character development and growth. So I think that's a pretty good reasoning. Who the frick is this? I do not know. I feel like there's gonna be a couple characters on this list I'm not gonna know. And I feel like you guys are going to roast me in the comments because you guys tend to always know more about Star Wars than I do in terms of, you know, lore and stuff. But I do not know who this is. I'm sure the comments will know. And let me know in the comments who she is and where you put her. And the same goes for any other character on this list I don't know. But I guess I should make another category right now, huh? Who the frick is this? Ah, perfect. All right. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Next up, Asajj Ventress. Ventress is actually a goaded character. Like, people tend to overlook Ventress when they think about Star Wars characters. Ventress is unironically a go-to character because her arc through the show is also just sick. She goes from a, just a normal bad guy, you know, Dooku's assassin, and she goes and she gets dumped by Dooku, gets sent off on her own. She becomes a bounty hunter. She's trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. And through it all, she kind of helps Ahsoka out and becomes a better character, a more moral character, and starts to not be so black and white. So because of that, I'm going to put her above Savage for sure because I really like her, but I just wish that they'd given a more definite ending in cinema, if that makes sense. All right, next up is Ahsoka, and it looks like they give us young Ahsoka and old Ahsoka, which is kind of based to them. However, the answer for both of them is very obvious. Young Ahsoka is S, and old Ahsoka is S, because both of these characters are absolute legends. Young Ahsoka goes through one of the sickest character growths ever in the Clone Wars TV show, and I love Ahsoka as a character so much. She's one of my favorite Jedi. And then old Ahsoka in Rebels is also sick. She's just an older, more mature Ahsoka, if that makes sense. Actually, you, you guys all know you've watched more Rebels than I have, but I've seen enough of Rebels to see Ahsoka. And her duel with Vader in Rebels on Malachor is one of my favorite duels in Star Wars. You have to watch my video where I ranked every Star Wars duel, which I'll put down in the comments below, but it's awesome. It's really sick. All right, next up is Kit Fisto. Here's the thing. Everyone loves to talk about Kit Fisto, oh, Kit Fisto, and he has some really good Clone Wars episodes, but as a character, he's really underutilized, I think. The Layer of Grievous episode with him and his Padawan, Nadar, who's a freaking moron, by the way. There's lucky, lucky Nadar's not on this list, or I would put him in F with Ray, because I can't stand that guy. So I'm going to put him in B with Ventress. I do wish they developed him a little bit better, but it is what it is. Sacy Tin is like a D. Sacy Tin is underutilized. They should have done more with him. They could have done more with him. And they could have done more with a lot of Jedi in the Clone Wars, but they didn't. They kind of stuck to the main, I don't know, probably 10. There's 10 main Jedi in the Clone Wars that they really focused on, and he's not one of them. So I'm going to put him in D. Just don't know that much about him. All right, up next is Grogu. Here, this is going to be really unpopular. I do not love Grogu that much. Like, Grogu's cool, don't get me wrong. And he is cute, like Baby Yoda. But, like, he's gotten worse. In the Mandalorian Season 3 now, there was a thing where... He had to fight some other child Mandalorian, and at the last second, he does some really bad animation, like, jump, and he, like, he, I don't even remember what happens. I just remember watching it and going, because it was so, like, cringy, if that makes sense. I'm going to put him in C, which might be unpopular, but as a character, you know, I think they kind of relied on his cuteness, and everything else kind of got thrown to the side. I don't know, maybe this new Mandalorian and Grogu movie that I'm hearing about, which, by the way, very creative title, The Mandalorian and Grogu. <laughs> Genius, guys. I'm really hoping that's going to flesh him out a little bit more, but... I don't have the highest hopes, to be honest, but let's, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. Plo Koon. Okay, I, I, I got to put Plo Koon in A. It's not even a question. Plo Koon is sick. He's one of the Jedi in the Clone Wars who actually got character development. He was focused in on a lot of episodes. There's the one sick line. I'll put the video here, but he, um, the clones are in space, and they go, we're just clones, sir. We're meant to be expendable. Ooh, that was kind of a good impression. <laughs> that was kind of sick. And he goes, not to me, you're not. And it was just the sickest moment, because chronically throughout the Clone Wars, <laughs> A lot of Jedi just don't care about their clones. We're just clones, sir. We're meant to be expendable. Not to me. So he's gonna go A. Uh, everyone loves Plo Koon. It's not a contest. And I get roasted in the comments if I didn't put him A. 
Anakin Skywalker. Okay, so here's, I think, if I recall correctly, I remember glancing and seeing other versions of Anakin on this list. Let me see. Okay, yeah, there were other versions of Anakin on the list, and I have put them down here. There's three. There's Clone Wars Anakin, Revenge of the Sith Anakin, and Attack of the Clones Anakin. And I gotta be honest, I just randomly pulled this list up. I really like how they do this. They, I like how they put different versions of the same character, because the characters change so much, and so many of them are, you know, different in several ways. Like, <laughs> when we get to Luke Skywalker and sequels Luke Skywalker... <laughs> You better believe they're going in different categories. There's not a chance of putting them both in S. But anyway, as for Anakin, Clone Wars Anakin is S. Clone Wars Anakin is such a legend. He's based, he's really sick, and his character development throughout the show really gives insight onto why he turned into Darth Vader. It was really, really good, and it helped the prequels out so much. But Revenge of the Sith Anakin is also S. He was so good in that movie. He, you definitely get a better impression watching him there than you did in Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones Anakin, I would probably put in like B. I did not like Hayden Christensen's acting in that movie. I know comments are going to say he was a very realistic interpretation of a teenage boy of his age. That's fine. I thought he was whiny and I thought the dialogue was just awful. And that's not his fault. But because of that, his character Anakin suffers. So I'm putting Attack of the Clones Anakin in B and Clone Wars and Revenge of the Sith Anakin in S. I think that's a very, very uncontroversial place to put either of them. Ah, uh, Supreme Leader Snoke. Snoke had real potential. Again, <laughs> Like so many of the sequel characters, I was rooting for Snoke. Snoke seemed like a good final boss. They were going to hype up the entire trilogy, and that was finally going to be the big bad villain in the end. But then Ryan Johnson came along and subverted our expectations. Oh, thank you, Ryan. And now I'm going to put Snoke in D tier. He was the one character that actually posed a threat to Rey. And boom, he's gone. Snoke, D tier. Ah, the legend himself. Darth Tyrannus, a.k.a. Count Dooku. Let's go. Count Dooku, I'm putting at the front of S tier. Uh, no, I can't. No. Ah, let's go. Okay. Count Dooku is my favorite character in Star Wars. I have a whole 10 to 15 minute video going over exactly why I love Count Dooku so much. And I go over his character. I go over his different appearances. I go over his motivations. Everything. You know, I'll link it in the comments too, along with the ranking lightsaber duels one. You can check it out later. It's one of my favorite videos I've ever made. And I'm kind of sad it didn't do that well. But regardless, Count Dooku is so sick. Count Dooku is not even a villain, I would say. I mean, maybe he is later, but initially, Count Dooku is just a man who sees the corruption in the Jedi Order and the Republic and wants no part of it. So I think Count Dooku, I could go way deeper, but again, you can just check out my video later if you want my Count Dooku video. I think Count Dooku is one of the unsung heroes of Star Wars, and he does not get enough praise. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I love Count Dooku. I think I talk about him almost every video. It's kind of an addiction at this point. I should go to rehab, maybe, for Count Dooku obsessiveness, but regardless, we're going to move on to Darth Maul himself. I think Darth Maul, yeah, Darth Maul also has his... um. Is Phantom Menace appearance here, so I'm going to put them right next to each other. It's just going to be easier for me to keep track of. Clone Wars Darth Maul, S tier. Darth Maul was done so well in the Clone Wars. It was genius to bring him back, and it was genius to give him the character development he had. And here's what I'm saying about a lot of... This is actually a great point about a lot of Star Wars. One of the reasons people are so mad about them bringing Emperor Palpatine back in The Rise of Skywalker was because it was done so poorly. But Darth Maul, it doesn't really make sense for him to come back either. Like, yes, I know there are lore reasons why he came back, but the reason fans are so accepting of Darth Maul and then bringing him back is because he was a character that was originally underutilized. In The Phantom Menace, people were sad that they didn't get more of him. And they brought him back, and then they turned him into such a good character that fans were willing to overlook the kind of stupidity that he came back from getting cut literally in half. And Darth Sidious, that did not happen to him. Like, I guarantee if Darth Maul had just been an awful character that made no sense and just kind of lurked around for the rest of the Clone Wars doing stupid stuff that was out of character, fans would not like it. And fans would think he was stupid he came back. But it's proof that even if you make some weird lore choices, but you do it well, fans would be so accepting and love it. That's just a, you know, little word to the wise for the Disney executives when it comes to things like, I don't know, bringing back Darth Sidious. That's all I'm saying. And then next up, we have Phantom Menace Darth Maul, who I, he's like a solid C tier. I mean, he's cool. He's, you know, Ray Park did great things with his choreography in the Duel of the Fates. He was fantastic. But as a character, he's just kind of there. He's a big, sad, not, not sad, believe me, not sad, big, scary villain. Um, He had like 30 lines in the entire movie, and it was just not enough. Like, we did not get enough character out of him. He was just there for the final fight at the end, basically. That was, that was basically it. So I'm going to put him in C, but Clone Wars really saved Darth Maul's character. Clone Wars is S, easily. All right, Darth Plagueis. Again, this is where my lack of Star Wars lore knowledge comes in, because Darth Plagueis, I'm going to have to put in like... Well, no, I'll put him in like B, because I don't know anything about him. Like, I feel bad, but I know he's impressive. Mother Talzin. Mother Talzin is really cool, and she's actually a really good addition to the Clone Wars. I just don't know where I'd put her on this list, because she's a great character. She's really cool. All right, you know what? I'm just going to put her on B, I think. I think B is a solid place to put her. And now that I'm looking at this list, I really kind of feel bad for putting Ventress on B with these other characters because I think she's so much better than all of them. So you know what? I'm going to take one for the team and put Ventress in A. I think she's 
a much better character than the other people in B so far. Uh, yeah, I think it is, it is a good place for Avengers. A little amendment to the first part of this video. All right, next up, we have the four stages of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Here's the thing about Obi-Wan Kenobi in all of his forms, in all of his stages. Obi-Wan Kenobi is a character that no one has ever disliked in any facet whatsoever. Obi-Wan Kenobi is the best Jedi, he's the best hero, and he's probably the best character in Star Wars realistically. You know, if you think about it, Obi-Wan lost his lover, Sabine, he lost his master, Qui-Gon, he lost the Jedi Order, the thing he devoted his life to, he lost Anakin Skywalker's apprentice, and then he had to watch Anakin Skywalker wreak havoc on the galaxy. Obi-Wan Kenobi has always been one of the best characters in Star Wars, and no one has ever complained about him. No one has ever said, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I don't like that guy. And because of that, I literally have to put every single iteration of Obi-Wan Kenobi in S. He's just one of the best characters in all of his versions. In every movie, he is the best character. He always is a highlight. Always. That being said, though, these last two Obi-Wans are just phenomenal. Honestly, I might... Honestly, I think I have to put these guys in A, these two, just so that it shows how good these two versions are. Because they're all phenomenal. Phenomenal characters. But Revenge of the Sith and New Hope are just so good and so moving and so much better than the first two. Not that the first two are bad at all. The only reason I'm putting them in A is just so it, it, it's a noticeable difference on how much better these characters are even though these ones are still great, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Just let it be known, Obi-Wan Kenobi is a great character. That's all I'm really saying here. Mace Windu. Mace Windu, I'm going to put a solid A tier. I know people might think he's S. I don't think he's S. I think Mace Windu is really cool. I think he's a good character. Um, I will say he's an awesome duelist and an awesome person to watch in a duel. I wish we got more of that with him because his purple lightsaber is sick. Form 7, his use of, you know, transferring between the light and the dark side constantly is sick. He's a great character. But in terms of actual character, I just don't think he's as good as the S tiers. So... A is a good spot for it. I'm going to leave him there. R2-D2. This might be an unpopular opinion. I think R2-D2 is like a B character. I don't know. I, I don't think he's that great. I just don't. It's personal. Maybe that's stupid of me. Next up is Darth Vader. Darth Vader is an S tier. Man, they give me a, there's, a, there's so many good characters in Star Wars. Darth Vader is an easy S tier. Honestly, there's not even that much I can say. Like, you know why Darth Vader is great. You love Darth Vader. He is just phenomenal. And he actually goes through so much character development, it's not even funny. The story of Star Wars is literally Anakin Skywalker's rise, fall to Darth Vader, and rise again as Anakin Skywalker. That is the entire story of Star Wars. It is called the Skywalker Saga because it's based around the tragedy of Darth Vader, as George Lucas would call it. So he has to go S tier, and everyone loves this guy. It's not even close. Next up, oh, we got a subscribe button. I'm going to put that in S just because, you know, you really should subscribe. I mean, it, if you like the video so far, I really appreciate it. A large percentage of my viewers aren't subscribed, so if you could just help me lower that statistic, I'd appreciate it. All right, next up, we have Emperor Palpatine. And I don't know why he gives me two Emperor Palpatines. I feel like he's kind of a consistent character. But I guess this is Return of the Jedi Emperor Palpatine. And this is Revenge of the Sith Emperor Palpatine. In which case, both of them are S. Like, both of them are just phenomenal. They're so cool. Revenge of the Sith is so cool because he's actually just a genius. He's overthrown the entire public. He duels Yoda. He duels Mace Windu. And he wins. He comes out on top. He converts Darth Vader. He's just a, such a good villain. He's an insane bad guy to have as a bad guy. And then Return of the Jedi Emperor Palpatine is sick because he's the final boss for Luke Skywalker. He poses the threat and the challenge. He's still the most powerful character in that throne room. It's just, he's just such a good villain. As cinema villains go, George Lucas did it spot on. Nail on the head. He is a phenomenal villain. Next up are these, um, what are they called? The Force Diads, I think. This is like the sister, the brother, and the balance. Honestly, I don't really think I, get, I can rank them as characters because I think they serve their purpose as well. They're not really characters. They're supposed to be physical embodiments of the light, the dark, and the middle. So I can't put them in who the frick is this, but I'm going to add a new layer, add a row below not fair to rank and i'm gonna put them i'm gonna put them all three there i think i think putting all three of them there is a good move i think you guys will agree with me grand admiral thrawn okay here's i'm ready for the comments to start aiming their weapons at me and waiting for the command to fire because i have not watched seasons three and four of rebels you know maybe someday i just gotta go on twitch and do like a five hour watch party where i watch all of it back to back to back on twitch because it won't copyright strike me because i just need to get at this point i just need to get out of the way i've not seen it and i need to see it so I know Thrawn's sick. I know everyone loves him. I know he's a genius. I've seen some sick clips of him. I cannot ignore the perception. I'm going to put him in A tier. He probably deserves S, but I just don't know about him well enough to put him in S. All I know is that this spider guy from season seven and one other season of Clone Wars is like kind of a nobody. So I don't know why they're putting him on this list. You know, he's like C. Like, well, I can't even put him C because these characters are better than him and more memorable than him. So I got him D. Next up is Greedo, and Greedo's kind of an L character. It's actually kind of funny. I did a video ranking the top 10 bounty hunters, and I think I put Greedo at the bottom. No, I didn't put him at the bottom, did I? I think I did, actually, because Greedo is just an L bounty hunter. <laughs> Greedo does not know how to bounty hunt that well. Maybe he was great, I don't know. But the one time I actually saw him bounty hunting, Han Solo shot him. Like, it was like a two-second interaction, so he's not actually that memorable of a character, 
and apparently that good of a bounty hunter because good bounty hunters don't get shot in their first interactions with their victims i'm gonna put him d i think that's a very solid place to put him next up is darth bane and again you guys are gonna kill me i don't know that much about darth bane i know he was in that one clones episode where he fought yoda and i know he was voiced by mark hamill in that which is sick but i'm not really fit to rank him because i just don't know that much about him so i'm gonna put it not fair to rank next up is padme amidala padme amidala is an a tier character padme amidala gets steadily better as the prequels go on she goes from being kind of weird <laughs> i gotta be honest kind of weird in the phantom menace imagine being 14 years old and like uh, 9 and 14 is a wild age gap i mean not really but like in terms of how old they actually are have you met a nine-year-old they're pretty freaking young anyway she gets steadily better as the prequels goes on and in clone wars she's a great character and revenge of the sith she's a great character Natalie Portman is a pretty decent actress, I think, and she, like Hayden Christensen, gets better as it goes on. And like, Padme Amidala is just a great character, I think. I think she's done really well, and I think she's actually a pretty convincing, moving character. So, Next up is Finn, and Finn is going in D, because Finn is another, another one of those Snokes who had real potential, and then the sequels happened, and he's not a Jedi. He becomes a background character, he gets pushed to the side, and we don't actually get any growth from him. Next up is Jin Erso. Jin Erso is A tier, I think, pretty easily. Jin Erso is a really interesting character, I think Rogue One as a story is awesome. I think it was done really well. Leia Organa is an S tier character. Leia Organa was one of the first, this is going to be hard to phrase, but it's well known that Leia Organa was one of the first characters in cinema that was a strong woman who was also very feminine. She wasn't a Rey where she was just basically a dude swinging a lightsaber. She's a feminine character, but also she's strong, resilient, brave, courageous. She has all these qualities as a character that she's also maintained her feminine. It's just like, it works so well. I think she's a phenomenal character, and George Lucas did her so well. Also, Carrie Fisher is a good actress, and I think that it just overall comes across really well in the movies. So, I'm going to put her there. She also was one of the only characters that the sequels did well. Like, Princess Leia is exactly where she should be, leading the resistance against the First Order at the head of it. She's a general. <laughs> Take notes, Han Solo, because that's where she should be. So, I think that's pretty, pretty safe right there. Next up is this droid from Rogue One, and I remember that this droid, I actually genuinely, genuinely can't remember if it was a she or a he. I think it was a he, though. I remember this droid was pretty funny, so I'm going to put him in B. Hondo Onaka. Hondo Onaka is an A character. Hondo Onaka is just Jack Sparrow. Just straight up Jack Sparrow. He literally reminds me exactly of him. His swagger, his demeanor, the way he talks. In Star Wars, you know, quite often the world is seen in black and white. You know, good guys and bad guys, Jedi and Sith. So it's really nice to have these complex characters like Dooku and Hondo, who are really, you know, not either. They're kind of in the middle. They kind of go wherever the wind blows them. And they, they're really, I don't even know how to describe this, but their characters have a lot of fluctuability. That's not even a word, I don't think. But you know what I mean. The characters are flexible. And they're not set in stone. So I like that a lot. Next up is Dengar. And Dengar, I mean, he's just a D. Like, I don't know that much about him. But from what I've seen, I'm not impressed. He got beat up kind of fast in the Clones episode where he was on the night train. <laughs> Guns and Roses. Rolling like a night train. And then in the Empire Strikes Back, he was, you know, a very small character. Barely mentioned. So he's a solid D character. But I just don't know much about him. And he's just not that impressive to me. Next up is the weird funky Jedi guy. The frick is his name? Chirrut. His name's Chirrut. I just looked it up on my phone. Chirrut was one of the best characters in Rogue One. He was really cool. I wish they'd expanded on him being a Jedi a little bit more. They kind of left it up to like, oh, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't. But I think Chirrut was really cool. I'm going to put him at the same level as this droid because I don't think I could put him A tier. He's just not that good, I don't think. But putting him with the droid from Rogue One, I think is good. He was a good character. Saw Guerrera is another character that I think I don't know that much about. But from what I can tell, I'm not really sure to put him. I think I'm going to put him C. Because he was a freedom fighter, I know, that always fought against, you know, the Separatists and then the Empire. But he was kind of a stupid character. <laughs> like, he kind of made a lot of stupid choices. He saw the world in black and white. I just thought he was kind of an alright character. So I'm going to put him in C. Next up is Chirrut's friend from Rogue One, the guy with the gun who was always making fun of Chirrut behind his back and to his face. I'm going to put him in C too, just because I don't remember that much about him. Alright, Lando Calrissian. Does Lando Calrissian have an Empire Strikes Back version and Return of the Jedi version in here? I don't think he does. So this just, this just represents Lando as a character. Lando as a character... It's pretty cool. I think he's another solid B character. The thing about Lando is Lando's always kind of a side character. You know, Empire Strikes Back is really his time to shine. But even then, his only plot device is, you know, betraying them and then saving them again. He's kind of on the side there. And the Return of the Jedi, he's really a side character. Like, he flies the Millennium Falcon in the battle in Return of the Jedi. But that's about it. all he does in the movie. Like, he's undercover in Jabba's Palace. But he never actually does anything undercover. All he does is get whacked and fall into the Scarlet Pit and barely get saved by Han Solo. He was done pretty well in Solo. I think he was one of the better characters in that. Donald Glover's a good casting choice. But again, I just thought he was just kind of, you know, take him or leave him. I think he's a good B character. I think he's solid. So, yeah. Next up is Han Solo. And Han Solo is an S tier character. He has a real character development. He has a real arc. He goes from a, a rogue who only cares about himself to a self-sacrificing hero willing to give it all up for the rebellion. Han Solo is just a legend. Like, everyone wanted to be Han Solo. Everyone wanted to be Han Solo. So, 
All right, IGA is just another solid D character up there with Dengar. He's just another no-name bounty hunter or barely named bounty hunter. And also, he's an IG unit. Like, he's not a one-off droid. I mean, yes, IGA is, but there's a million IGs out there who all do the exact same thing and have the exact same personality as him. So I'm really going to put him in D. I'm not, I don't care that much about him. I don't know that much about him. The next up is Ezra Bridger. Ezra Bridger, <laughs> I really don't want to do this, guys, because I know you're going to roast me in the comments. I know Ezra Bridger becomes based in seasons three and four of Rebels. But I haven't watched seasons three and four of Rebels. I just haven't. So I'm going to put Ezra Bridger. <laughs> I, I know he's great. I know he's a really good character. I know people really like him. So I'm going to put him in B. I know he, if I watched it, I might put him higher than that. If I watched Rebels seasons three and four. But the Rebels I have watched seasons one and two, he was just kind of a whiny kid who I wasn't too impressed by. However, I, I know he gets way better. So I'm just going to put him in B and move on before you guys roast me too much. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. For not having watched Rebels 3 and 4. I just, I should have done it. I should do it. I don't know why I'm not doing it right now. Why am I making these videos for you guys when I could be watching Rebels Seasons 3 and 4? I know. Next up is the Grand Inquisitor. And Grand Inquisitor is like another... D. He's in one season of Rebels and he dies pretty quick. I hate his lightsaber. People are like, oh, but it spins when he does this. Yeah, that's not impressive. Have you seen Darth Maul? He's impressive when he spins a lightsaber. That guy creates a whirlwind manually. Grand Inquisitor is a solid D character. Next up is Luke Skywalker. And Luke Skywalker, this is Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker. That is an S tier character right there. Return of the Jedi Luke Skywalker and the entire original trilogy Luke Skywalker is phenomenal. Luke Skywalker really has some of the best character growth in cinema and stories as a whole throughout the entire world. He goes from a farm boy who learns about being a Jedi, gets absolutely destroyed in Empire Strikes Back, you know, can't do anything right, can't save his friends, can't beat Vader, can't use the Force, and comes back in Return of the Jedi as the hero, chooses the light side over the dark, and just overall is super impressive as a character. Obviously, he's an S tier. I think it's no contest. Sequels Luke Skywalker, I'm putting with Rey. I really, really do not like Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi. I think he was just done so poorly. Complete bastardization of his character, for lack of a better term. It was completely ruined. It took a character who was legendary, who was great, who kids looked up to, who fans of all ages loved and could get behind, and they just completely ruined him. They made him a sad, grumpy old man who made a mistake he would never have made trying to kill a, his nephew in his sleep. That is not Luke Skywalker. Luke Skywalker saved the most evil man in the galaxy. And then after he made the mistake, which he would not have made, Luke Skywalker went and abandoned himself on an island, refusing to help anyone and wanting to die alone. And just wanting to die. Which is not something that Luke Skywalker would have done. Like, even if he had made the mistake, the OG original trilogy Luke Skywalker would have gone and tried to fix it. He would have done something about it. Luke Skywalker sequels is just awful. Awful bastardization of a character, F tier. The second F tier character on this list. I think most of the Bad Batches on this list Tech is one of the more average characters in the Bad Batch. You know, he's not bad, but he's C. Because he's just there. Like, he's not, he's a main character in some sense, because all of them are main characters to some sense. But he's nothing special, I would say. So I'm going to put him C. Next up is Commander Wolf, Plo Koon's clone commander. He's not bad. Actually, I'm going to put him in D. He's not bad, but I just don't know anything about him. Next up is Commander Cody. Commander Cody is a B character, for sure. You know, he's a cool character, and I like him. And he's Obi-Wan Kenobi's clone commander, which is cool. But he just does not get the amount of character development that someone like Rex gets in the show. They chose Rex over him, and that's fine. I think Rex is a good character too, and Rex is a better character. In fact, Rex is right here on the list. Let me put Rex in S tier right now. Rex is by far the best clone in Star Wars. The most moving clone, the most memorable clone, and the best character. Maybe Fives is up there too, but Rex is just phenomenal. Like, Rex is just one of the best developed characters in the Clone Wars. In my video where I rank the top 10 best Clone Wars characters, which you can also check out, <laughs> and I got a whole list of videos in the comments that you guys got to watch later. But Rex is, I think, is like number two on that list. He was just done so well in the Clone Wars. Next up is Trilla, and I am not fair to rank Trilla because I have not played Jedi Fallen Order in any meaningful sense. I've played like an hour of it, which again is a flaw on my part. But when I play video games, I tend to like online battle royales, <coughs> Fortnite battle royale. <coughs> Jedi Fallen Order is just not my cup of tea. So, Trilla, I'm not fair to rank because I don't know anything about her. I know she gets killed by Vader, but I also know that she's a villain for the entire story that I don't know anything about. So, maybe she's great. I really don't know. Wrecker is another tech character. I really am not a huge fan of the trope of the generic dumb Hulk guy who's just a bruiser and can't think for himself and is a total idiot. But, I will say, they did get Bruiser a nice connection with Omega. And Omega is not a character that I like at all. I think she's one of the worst characters in Bad Batch by far. But her connection with Wrecker was one of the highlights of the show. Bosk is next, and Bosk is like, this is tough. Bosk is solid B, I think. Because even though Bosk isn't that well developed, every time that we see him, he's just such a cool character. He's so competent. He's a good bounty hunter. I love Trandoshans. They're like two meters tall and built like Hercules. They're so jacked. And if you remember Battlefront 1, the original and the better one, if you played Bosk as the villain, you know, you got the hero pack and you play Bosk, he has that he vision mode that you go into and you just absolutely lay waste to everyone in your path. Like he is unstoppable. 
I freaking love Bosk. Bosk is a legend. Next up is Phasma, and Phasma is another Finn character. D, because there was so much wasted potential. Phasma had actual potential to be a cool, interesting character, and then boom, Ryan Johnson comes along, and Phasma gets whacked in the face by Finn's baton thing, and that's it. Another wasted opportunity. Aura Singh. Aura Singh is on the same level as Bosk, I think. Because actually, in, in Clone Wars, when you see them, they're usually together, and they also have the same amount of character development, I think. Aura Singh is a cool character, very vicious, very ruthless, and she's a solid bounty hunter and a solid B character. In my video, I ranked the top 10 bounty hunters in Star Wars. <laughs> It'll be linked in the comments below. There's like a whole list at this point. Uh, I think she was in the top three, maybe top five. All right, next up is Chewbacca, and Chewbacca, I think, is a solid A-tier character. He's by far the least interesting of the original trilogy cast if that makes sense except for the droids obviously c3po and r2d2 but that's not his fault i mean he's han solo's sidekick that's his entire purpose in star wars he and han are a package deal i think he's done very well consistently like he's in he's in the sequels too and he's good in the sequels because his role is very simple and he fills it well next up is bo katan and bo katan in my video again my clone wars video top 10 clone wars characters i put bo katan last because i just think <clears throat> her character was kind of weird like it flip-flopped a lot she originally was with death watch because she wanted to restore mandalore to its for former glory but then as the show went on, she kind of flip-flopped and she wanted to help the Republic destroy Mandalore and get rid of Maul. It was all kind of convoluted, I think. And then in The Mandalorian, I think she was done kind of badly. I'm going to put her in a solid C, I think. I think it's a good place for her. Maybe I'm being a little unfair. I don't know. So you guys let me know in the comments what you think. All right, next up is Crosshair from Bad Batch. And I'm just going to get some H2O real quick. <sighs> all right. Wonderful. Next up is Crosshair from Bad Batch, and Crosshair is another record character, except I think he's a little better. I'm going to put him B. I think it was really interesting, and in Bad Batch, making him the villain, like, you know, of the show, was really cool. And it made him a much better character, and also, as the Bad Batch goes, he's like one of the coolest guys in the Bad Batch. Like, let's be honest. I'm a little biased because I think snipers are some of the coolest characters. Guys who have the insane aim are really fun to watch always, so I think he's really cool. And I think he's just a solid B-tier character. Like, I think he's a definition of a B-tier B -tier character. And he's one of the best characters in Bad Batch, I would say, so. And then Hunter, who's next up, is, like, right near with him. Hunter is also one of the more interesting characters. I wish Hunter had more of a distinct ability. Like, all the Bad Batch has their thing, and I feel like Hunter's thing is kind of being the leader. But I wish he had more of a distinct thing. You know, he has the cool electro knife in his wrist sheath, which is cool. I don't know. I wish he developed him a little bit more, but as a leader and as a character, he's one of the more interesting ones in the Bad Batch. So, you know what? BTR with Crosshair is a good place for him. All right, next up is Boba Fett. And Boba Fett is kind of crazy because... He became such a legendary character out of nothing. He was in the original trilogy for like 10 minutes, and five of that was him dying in the Sarlacc pit. So it's really funny that he became such a main character. The problem is that he was great in the Clone Wars, he was great in the original trilogy, he was an intimidating cool character, but they freaking gave him his own show and made the show awful. The Pokemon Fett is one of my least favorite Star Wars shows that I've ever seen. I just cannot stand it. Like, I did not want to see a nice guy Boba Fett. I wanted to see a ruthless Boba Fett. Because of the Pokemon Boba Fett, Boba Fett is a D-tier character. I really am sad to have to put him there. All right, the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian is an interesting character because season one of Mandalorian is like S tier. He was such a cool guy. He went through some real character growth and the Mandalorian is one of the best Disney Plus shows ever. Problem is, as the show goes on, the seasons get worse and worse and the Mandalorian goes down with it. He becomes less and less of a main character. He gets more pushed to the side. It becomes more of a Grogu and Bo-Katan show. It's just kind of a weird freaking arc that they have for him and I do not like it. I think right now I'm going to put him B. Only be No, I'll put him A because the first season carries so hard. It's such a good show. Such a good season. So I'm going to put him A, but let it be known that as the, sh as the Mandalorian story goes on, and a lot's really going to ride on this new Mandalorian Grogu movie, but as his story goes on, as of right now, I do not like where it's trending. And I think it's getting a little worse slowly. So this movie's really going to be a make or break for him, in my opinion. Jango Fett, it's kind of sad that I have to put Jango Fett above Boba Fett, but Jango Fett's like a C character. Like, I know he's only in one movie, but in that movie, he's consistently cool. He has so many cool gadgets. The world building around him as a character is just awesome. His armor is sick. He as a character is really well done. You know, I think his template for the clones story is cool. I think he's just a solid character. I think he's a solid C character. And he's not a very big part of the story, which is why I have to put him in C. But yeah, I like I like Jango Fett. And I'm actually sad that I have to put him above Boba Fett. I genuinely am. But it is what it is. Oh, I didn't even see this. But next up is Empire Strikes Back Yoda. Yoda from the original trilogy. So I put Yoda from the prequels up here, which is deserved. He's sick in the prequels. And then this is his original trilogy. He goes right up there with his prequels counterpart. Yoda is great in the original trilogy. He's a great teacher. He has so many legendary quotes. I think he's awesome. He's sick. So I'm going to put him right up there in S tier. Next up is Embo. And I remember in my Bounty Hunters video where I ranked every Bounty Hunter in Star Wars, I got some flack for not putting Embo higher. And I was, it was funny because as I was making the video, like the day after the video came out, I really thought about it. And I was like, man, Embo could have been way higher on that list. Like Embo is actually a sick character. You know, I'm going to put him on D tier, I think. No, because that's right above F. I think he's C tier. 
I think he's one of the better bounty hunters in the Clone Wars as a whole. I think he's pretty cool. Cad Bane. Cad Bane is an easy S tier for me. But I remember watching Clone Wars again with some friends recently, and I remember being blown away by just how awesome Cad Bane was. Cad Bane is one of the few characters in the Clone Wars that takes on Jedi consistently and wins. Like, he actually genuinely just takes on Jedi full on in nothing but a cowboy hat, a trench coat, and dual blasters, and he wipes the floor at them. He's such a cool character. He has the coolest voice in the galaxy. He has sick red eyes. His cowboy hat's awesome. He's a space cowboy, and I love everything about him. I think I put him at third on my top 10 best Clone Wars characters list, and he's just incredible. I freaking love this guy. Solid S tier, and at this point in time, my favorite bounty hunter in Star Wars. Easily. Barris Afi. Barris Afi is a cool character, I think. Her arc was done well. Like, as a traitor, as someone who tried to frame Ahsoka, as someone who was unhappy with the Jedi Order, I actually really like Barriss Afi. I think she's a B-tier character. As a villain, too, because she is the villain to some extent. I really hope that she comes back someday so we can see what happened to her. Because as of right now, the last time we see her is her getting led off to a Republic jail cell right before the rise of the Empire. So, remember in the Ahsoka show, that guy, Inquisitor Meridoc or something like that? I really thought that that was going to be Barriss Afi. I thought that would have been such a good move if they did that. But then it was just some random no-name who got killed off in two seconds because Disney kind of ruined that part and Dave Filoni did not take advantage of the opportunity he had which is to bring Barriss Afi back but regardless I really hope you see her again someday Kylo Ren Kylo Ren goes right in detail with the waste of potential Kylo Ren for the first half of The Force Awakens was sick I was really intimidated by him I was impressed by him I thought he was gonna be the main villain for the sequel trilogy and then they just completely ruin it I don't know how they keep doing this it's not that hard <laughs> he was a really cool character and then he slowly becomes more and more wishy-washy he gets beaten by ray he's taking off his helmet all the time which destroys his air of mysteriousness and intimidation he's crying a lot he's conflicted he's confused he wasn't a good villain and when they made him a hero he wasn't a good hero either like he was just not good in any of the roles they tried to play and it really was a wasted opportunity like he was one of the cooler characters in the sequels that just got squandered i think so he's a pretty easy d tier for me i'm gonna leave him there Maybe he's C, but I, I, I just can't, I just can't believe the opportunity they had and wasted with him. I really can't. So, all right, Cal Kestis, I'm going to put in not fair to rank because again, only played one hour of Jedi Fallen Order. I know he's very well liked by fans. I know in my video where I ranked every Jedi, again, link, I'll link it down below. At this point, I'll just give you a whole catalog of all my videos I've ever made. Why not? But I know in that video, I got a lot of comments saying that Cal Kestis is their favorite Jedi because of the video game and the development he undergoes in that. So yeah, Cal Kestis, I know is good. But I'm not fit to rank him because I just don't know anything about him that well. All right, next up is this guy. I don't remember his name. Some instinct inside of me, maybe the voices are telling me it's Ord Mantell. I think that's probably wrong. I think I'm just delusional and schizophrenic. Anyway, I remember this guy from one Clone Wars episode and one exactly because he's not a big character. But it was the episode where he went into the valley and he held off waves and waves of battle droids in the name of helping people escape on the ships that were coming in. And I remember he and his clone captain just stood there valiantly and fought to the end and sacrificed themselves for the greater good. I'm putting him in C for that because I remember... He's not a big character in the show at all, but that one scene just was so emotional and I didn't bring tears to my eyes, but it's definitely one of those scenes that you get goosebumps from, for sure. And here's the thing. My viewing audience is like 90% male, so sorry for the 10% of women who are watching this. Love you. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here and watching these videos. But anyway, to the guys out there, and actually maybe the women feel this too, all of us guys out there have had daydreams and visions of us in a, in a valley like that, waves and waves of the enemy coming on and us making our final stand, sacrificing ourselves, knowing we're going to die, but just holding off the enemy. Every guy's imagined that. Every guy can relate to Ord Mantell, if that's his name. So I'm going to put him in C tier because that guy's living the dream. Every guy's had visions like that. So anyway, Evan PL is next. Evan PL is another small character. I'm putting him in C because he was in the Citadel arc, I know, which is actually a long arc. That was like five episodes. I didn't realize until I watched it again. But that was a pretty long arc in the Clone Wars. Anyway, he's kind of underutilized in the Clone Wars show as a whole. He's one of those characters who's only in the Citadel arc. But in the Citadel, he's pretty sick. He's kind of like a Yoda-esque character who's more normal, if that makes sense. I like his Russian accent. I think it's kind of funny to hear him go, eh, the droids. I think it's so funny to hear him say that, but I think he's a C character. Not sure I can say. Pre Vizsla is kind of underrated. Pre Vizsla is like a B-tier character because he was kind of right. Mandalore fell off. Mandalore needed to go back to its warrior ways and its warrior past and its warrior legacy. And not, you know, be conquerors in the galaxy and be evil guys like Death Watch was. Death Watch was wrong in some sense. But Mandalore had fallen off hard. And Pre Vizsla saw that and he had a vision for it. So Pre is a solid character. And also his duel with Darth Maul is sick. I freaking love that duel with the dark saber for the throne of Mandalore. It's awesome. And he meets his end like a Mandalorian. I'll put the clip in here, but he has some sick final words. Check it out. Like you said, only the strongest shall rule. Absolute legend. I freaking love that guy. Anyway, next up is Eeth Koth, and Eeth Koth is like a D-tier character. He's another Stacey Tin. I know he's in one episode of The Clone Wars where he gets captured by Grievous, but other than that, 
He's just not in it that much. He's not a big character, and he doesn't have any cool final moment stands like Ormantel Mantel here. So I gotta put him in D tier. I just don't know that much about him, and he's not a big character at all. Next up is Adi Gallia, and Adi Gallia I'm gonna put with C tier. I don't know. I feel like C tier so far has been a couple of random Jedi who just aren't that big of characters, but are still pretty cool. Because I remember Adi Gallia goes with Obi Wan Kenobi and fights Darth Maul and Savage Press and gets butchered by Savage. Like gets butchered. I think I think he kills her by headbutting her with his horns. That's crazy. That's a crazy way to go out. I've never seen a Zyrak do that before. That's kind of rare. All right, Kanan Jarrus is next, and Kanan Jarrus is like my favorite Rebels character. He's going A tier. Even for the first couple seasons, is like the best character in Rebels. And I freaking love that guy. He's a really cool character. It's cool that he trains Ezra. It's cool that he's a Jedi. Everything about him is pretty sick. And even though I haven't watched enough of Rebels, I have seen on YouTube Shorts, I think, the scene of him saving, him, saving his friends and sacrificing himself with the fuel and doing this and holding back the fuel and pushing the ship away. And I remember there was some sick music behind it. Without ever watching the actual episode, I got chills from watching that. I remember it was so sick. Again, if you haven't noticed from watching this list, I'm a sucker for self-sacrificing characters. If you're willing to make the ultimate choice and save your friends over yourself, I think that's so cool and so respectable, and I will put you higher on the list because of that. Ayla Sakura. Ayla Sakura... <sighs> Ayla Sakura, I would say, is B tier because she's a little more developed than these three, I think. I know more about her from that one arc she was in with the... um, What was the arc where they used the defoliator? I remember her from that, and I remember her being good in that. So I think she's a B-tier character, so. All right, next up is Random Inquisitor. I don't even know his name, bro. I can't even put him. He's not F, because I remember he was kind of cool, and he was kind of a good Inquisitor. I don't freaking know his name. <laughs> I'm not going to put him anything about other than D. Next up is, who the frick is this? All right, you guys, all right, this is a real challenge for you guys in the comments, because I've never seen this guy before. So if you know him, I'll be slightly impressed. Slightly. And maybe I'll heart your comment. Maybe if I'm feeling generous. But I do not know who the frick this is, so I cannot rank him. All right, next up is, I don't even remember his name, but it's uh, Cal Kestis' master. And I remember him being cool, but again, I have not played enough of Jedi Fallen Order. Not fair for me to rank. I know people like him, so I'm just going to leave him there. All right, if I'm not mistaken, this is like the second most Inquisitor in Rebels. I remember her talking to Darth Maul and interrogating some people. So I'm going to put her in D. I'll put her, I'll put her above this guy because I don't remember his name. I don't remember her name either, but I remember her a little bit more. These last five characters have been kind of rough because I don't even know most of them. Like, I, I don't know half their names, so... That's been kind of rough. Like this guy. I think this guy is in Jedi Fallen Order, but I've never seen him in my life. It is not fair, fair for me to rank because I think he's a big Inquisitor who's like a huge guy that gets beaten by Cal Kestis at some point. I don't freaking know him. It's not fair for me to rank. Luminar Unduli is fair for me to rank. Luminar Unduli is like a B tier. I do remember very vividly though. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, in the episode where Barra Safi and Ahsoka Tano get caught under the droid factory, Anakin Skywalker's like, hey, you know, maybe we should try to save these people because we know exactly where they are and exactly what they're going to be doing. And, you know, it probably won't be that hard for us to get them out. And Luminar Undul is like, Skywalker, I'm ready to let my Padawan die if that's what the Force wills. And it's like, dude, your Padawan's down there. You know she's down there. Why would you not at least try to help her? Like, Anakin Skywalker's being logical here, and you're like, I'm ready to let her go. Maybe she doesn't want to be let go. Me, I, sorry. Let me be, let me let me play devil's advocate here. Maybe your Padawan doesn't want to be let go. I don't know. Maybe she wants to be saved and live. Solid B tier Jedi, I think. General Grievous. General Grievous is funny because <laughs> he's cool in the Clone Wars. He's a cool character, but he's such a freaking coward. Anytime going gets rough, General Grievous is like, see ya, and dips out of there. But I'm going to put him, you know, he's General Grievous. He's A. He's got the four lightsabers. Cool character. Cool plots. He's in some cool episodes of Clone Wars. He's a pretty big character in Clone Wars. Solid A tier character. I can't put Ventress in A and not put Grievous in A. That's what I'll say. All right, next up is Keanu Mundy, and Keanu Mundy, I'm going to put in C with these guys. I remember he was in a couple Clone Wars episodes, but he was never a huge character. I saw some video on YouTube. I think it was maybe the Scoundrels Cantina. You guys don't know who that is, I'm sure. I think I saw a video talking about why he... Oh, maybe it was Gretzley. I think it was actually Gretzley's video. So, shout out to Gretzley's, because that was a fire video. But apparently, he was like a huge racist or something. Like, he was a horrible guy. So, that was kind of funny. That I don't know how much truth there is in that, and I don't remember who made the video, or how well the video detailed his racist awfulness. So... Put him in C tier, but he may be an awful guy. Next up is Qui-Gon Jinn, and Qui-Gon Jinn, oh, it's been a while since we had an S tier, but Qui-Gon Jinn is an S tier Jedi. He was an absolute legend. He saw the flaws in the Jedi Order. The only reason that he wasn't on the council was because he saw that they were too in league with the Republic, and he wanted them to be more independent. He could have been a better swordsman because, you know, he kind of got absolutely demolished by Darth Maul, but you know what? That's regrettable. Liam Neeson is a great actor, but everything about him is sick. Qui-Gon Jinn is an overall character. It's just S tier in every aspect. The only sad thing is we didn't get more of him. That's what I'll say. We didn't get more of him. Quinlan Voss. Quinlan Voss, I remember, is one of the Jedi that helped hunt down Cad Bane with Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I'm going to put him in C with the other kind of random Jedi who were in a couple of Clone Wars episodes. I do think he ran off with Ventress and got married to Ventress and fell in love. But again, as I said with Ventress, they didn't really expand upon that very much. So I don't know that much about this whole thing. I'm just going to put him up here in C tier. That's where I'm going to put him. 
All right, C3PO, it would not be right to put C3PO anywhere other than right next to Ardudito in B tier. C3PO is fine. I'm not a big fan of these droids. I think they're kind of overhyped, and C3PO annoys me sometimes. Actually, I gotta put C3PO behind R2, because I like R2 more than C3PO. B tier, because he's such a crucial part of Star Wars, but he's not that great. I think he's kind of an average character. Getting to the end here, we have Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks, I freaking hate Jar Jar Binks. He kind of fits in this list pretty well. He's gonna go on D tier, because he's not Ray bad, but he's not great either. I think he's not funny. I think he pisses me off whenever I see him. I really don't like his jokes. I don't like his humor. I think he's just kind of comedic relief for 12 year olds. I think it's one of the things that drags the Phantom Menace down a little bit. So that's what I'd say. Finally, last but not least, we have Jabba the Hutt. Jabba the Hutt is sick. Jabba the Hutt, I think, is an A tier character because anyone who can be that fat and that much of a slug and still be the top of a crime syndicate that rules the galaxy deserves A tier. Anyway, guys, this is my final ranking of every Star Wars character. I'll take my camera off right here so you can get the full view. And you really should watch this video right here where I found the top 10 best Clone Wars characters. It's one of my favorite videos I've made. I think it's really underrated. And you should definitely check it out because a lot of the characters on this list are Clone Wars characters. So I think you'd really like it. Thank you very much for watching and be sure to subscribe if you enjoy. Thank you very much. Have a good one.